Hi there. Today, I'd like to share some tips and tricks for using our OneNote digital planner. If you are a beginner and are very new to the OneNote app, you probably come across some things that you can't get your head around. So I put together some tips and tricks to help you get started with OneNote digital planning. Well, if you are an experienced user, check out the chapters where you might find something helpful there. I'm going to demonstrate these tips and tricks on Windows, Mac, and iPad. If you like my tutorials, please subscribe. That keeps me creating more tutorials for you. Thank you so much for support. Okay, let's get started. Tip number one, the first time you download the planner in OneNote, chances are you'll see some color lines with letters right next to them. Well, these are the initials of the person who last edited or edited these notes. As I'm the creator of the OneNote planner, the initials of my name will automatically show up here. And unfortunately, these cannot be permanently deleted, but you can hide them. On Windows OneNote 365, you can go to the History tab and click Hide Authors. On Mac, you can go to the View tab and click Hide Authors. Tip number two, if you are new to OneNote Planner, one thing you'll notice is that the planner displays differently on different devices. For instance, on a desktop, it looks like it doesn't take up the entire screen. On iPad, it looks like the planner is partially cropped out. This is because the actual size of the planner is fixed and different devices have different screen sizes. So a simple fix is to zoom in and zoom out. On MacBook, tablets like iPad, you can simply use your fingers to zoom in and zoom out. On desktop or iMac, you can go to the view tab, click zoom in or zoom out. Here's a trick to make this easier. Move your cursor to the top left corner of the planner, hold down the control key while scrolling your mouse. This way, you can adjust the planner size to what works best for you. This trick applies to both Windows and Mac. Tip number three, how to type in the planner. If you use the planner on Apple devices, you can simply put the cursor wherever you want to type in. Let's say I want to make some notes on the daily schedule. Instead of creating multiple text boxes, which is messy, press the return key to go to the next line and so on your notes will be well lined up like so. If you use the planner on Windows, you might get confused on how to properly type in. Let's say I want to type morning Pilates at 7 a.m., but the cursor is a bit off, so the text doesn't line up with the template. If we try to move the text box, it does as if it snaps to some invisible grid. Okay, here's a trick. Hold down the Alt key while you move the text box. Now you can move the text freely. Here's the thing. What if I don't want to hold down the Alt key every time I type? The good news is there is a way. So go to the Draw tab, click Shapes, and click Snap to Grid. Now you can move your text box wherever you like without holding down the Alt key. Tip number four, if you use the light mode OneNote planner in a dark mode setting, you'll find you barely can read your notes. This is because OneNote automatically updates the text color opposite to the background color so that you don't have to change the text color every time switching between light and dark modes. So to fix this issue is to turn your OneNote back to the light mode. If you prefer to work in dark mode, Please make sure you purchase the dark mode OneNote planner. Tip number five, this is not very common, but a few of you have asked me why I can only join my planner. I want to type. So what happened was you might have used the pen tool and somehow forgot to turn it back to the text mode or your OneNote just had a glitch. Tip number six, in our last Weno tutorial, I showed you how to incorporate the Word Life templates to your primary planner.
If you do that on tablet, say iPad, you'll find there's no option to deset the template picture as background. The tablet version of OneNote has some limitations. So I would suggest always edit your OneNote planner on your computer. Whether it's Windows or Mac, it'll be much quicker and easier. Then you can come back and journal on your tablet as usual. Tip number seven. For those of you who use the planner on tablets like iPad, you might want more space when working on your planner. You can click here to expand the screen like so. All right, I hope you find this tutorial helpful. Let me know in the comments if you come across other problems of using our OneNote Digital Planner. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in my next one.